Thank you. Now every school in Britain has the chance to become an academy. That's one of the headlines from the government's education shake-up. But the policy reform that's prompted the most heated debate is that concerning free schools. Groups of parents, teachers or indeed any group will soon be able to set up state-funded schools that lie outside the government's control. But is it a good idea? We're joined by the author Toby Young who says it is. He's leading, or rather, he's leading a parent group in West London trying to set up a secondary state school. Also with me is Guardian columnist Polly Toynbee, who says Toby has it wrong. Why so, Polly? Well, we're going through a really hard time now. Uh, the Institute for Physical Studies says that every department that isn't protected is going to have to lose 25%. Now imagine that. That means the schools department is going to lose a quarter of teachers, a quarter of teaching assistants, a quarter of everything. It's absolutely terrifying what, what they face. And so the idea that any group of parents anywhere can suddenly take a whole lot of that money out and set up their own school, whether or not you need extra places, and some places genuinely do need extra school places, but this can happen anywhere. So you'll have a huge amount of surplus places. The old schools will be left drained of, of some pupils and struggling on at great extra expense. It is a huge extravagance that I just can't see how we can afford at this time. And I think all those... You know, most parents will be left with the old schools and will be very distressed when they see that happening. Toby, you're being extravagant. No, that's not the case. I think um, Polly's concern would be a right one if we were in the midst of a falling population, but actually we're in the midst of a population boom. Uh, we know that we're going to need um, 300,000 new primary school places over the next three years in England alone, and we'll shortly need... 300,000 new secondary school places. So the issue is, what's the best and most cost-effective way of delivering those new schools? And uh, in the case of our group, for instance, um, we found uh, an unused secondary school, which has just been sitting in mothballs for four years. And the cost of actually uh, getting that up and running again will be quite low, much lower than it would cost uh, the Department of Education to build a brand new school using the Building Schools for the Future budget. So actually allowing groups like ours to set up schools in leased buildings is going to be the most cost-effective way of, of meeting the anticipated demand for new places. Providing more cost-effective places um, in a population boom, Polly. Well, I mean, possibly in some areas there will need to be new schools and maybe that makes sense. But the point about this is it'll be totally random. The local authorities won't be able to say, yes, we do need a new school here or we don't need one there or we need one at this end of the borough, not at that end of the borough. They won't be allowed to do that. There'll be no planning at all. It'll just be up to groups of parents and mostly they'll be the ones with sharp elbows getting together and saying we demand to have our school here and the local authority will have to give them all of that extra money and resources. I think it's very alarming. What's more, I don't see any way in which you can prevent there being a huge explosion of lots more faith schools. Every single church will have the ability, if they want, to say we want another school here. All right, Michael Gover said it won't be the most extreme faiths, but nevertheless it'll be a great explosion of faith schools in this country which is the most secular. And, uh, you know, if there's no rational uh, way of allocating schools, saying where you need them and what sort of schools they could be, this is a recipe for chaos at a time when we've got no money. Toby, just cherry-picking. Well, there are two points there. Um, the first point, on the first point, Polly, um, I don't want to be too critical of uh, my own local authority because I want to work with them when it comes to setting up my school. But they haven't proved particularly good at planning. In fact, they've been completely um, wrong-footed by the population boom. They've been trying to put porter cabins in various primary schools up and down the borough, and their record when it comes to planning is actually quite poor, and they're not alone in that. Uh, local authorities have been completely surprised by the unanticipated increase in demand for primary school places all over the country. And on the second point, um, I think it's wrong of Polly to belittle faith schools. Um, if you look at the school league tables across the country, the schools topping those tables are generally Catholic schools and C of E schools. Two of the best schools in my borough are Catholic and C of E. Um, uh, I don't think there's much worry. I don't think we have to worry that uh, too many loopy groups will set up schools uh, using this new policy. After all, it'll be at the discretion of the Secretary of State as to which groups are granted funding agreements. And if, uh, if they clearly, if their values aren't right, if, uh, if they're a bit loopy and a bit way out, I don't think they'll be granted a funding agreement. But if they're respectable faith schools, then I think that's a good thing. 
I don't think they'll be loopy, but there'll just be lots more of them and lots more Muslim schools. Every single mosque will want its own school, and, and as long as they're not extreme, which after all most mosques are not, uh, there'll be no reason that they can be refused. The local authority can't say no. And when you say in that, in that way that faith schools are the best, they're the best because they select. All of the educational research evidence shows they have the fewest children on free school meals, they have the, most, the fewest children from chaotic families who by definition on the whole tend not to go to church. Uh, it's selection that is their magic ingredient, and that has been proved so conclusively, and that will be true of these new small schools. There'll be people, you know, you know, Toby, uh, there'll be people like us who will know somebody, you know somebody, that's setting up the parent school, they will be heavily middle class. It's just the way it'll happen, even if you don't intend to make it happen that way, that's how it'll be, and the rest of the kids will be left alone and left behind. Toby? Well, Polly, I don't see how you can simply, I don't see how you can simply pronounce from on high that that's how it will be. Um, the admissions policy of our school will be more or less identical to that of every other comprehensive school in our borough. Um, if we're ever subscribed, we hope to have some kind of lottery system in place like they have in Brighton. We're going to bend over backwards to make sure that pushy middle class parents don't have any sort of advantage when it comes to getting their children into our school. And to a certain extent, I agree with you about faith schools. I wouldn't want to remove their right to admit children to a particular faith, but I think that all children, regardless of faith, should have access to those kinds of schools. Academic schools, quite small schools, schools with a lot of discipline, with rigorous academic curricula. Uh, the problem is that at present, only those who can afford to go private or who can afford to move into the catchment areas of really good comprehensives, or who can get into one of the 164 remaining grammar schools in England, or who are of the right particular faith, have access to really good schools. And what we want to do is give all children access to a really first-class education, regardless of income, ability or faith. Of course that's what we all want. Of course I recognise that. But the point is, all of the research shows that what the really so-called really good schools are, are on the whole schools that have the strongest middle-class uh, intake of children who've got parents who've already been to university or are highly educated and motivated. So that's what really determines what's a good school. And naturally, middle classes want to congregate together in the same places. They know best about what, they're, they're likely to hear first about what are the schools where the other middle classes are congregating and they will be, you can bet, these new parent-led schools. And even though I'm glad to say, hear you're going to do a lottery because I do think that's a good idea, the oversubscribed schools will be oversubscribed by, anyway, the middle classes. You will get, you're very likely to get, an extremely top-heavy population. As a result, your, resu your results will be very good. The next-door school's results will be worse because they'll have all the chaotic children and the ones whose parents didn't get it together to apply. And uh, the division, which is already the class segregation under Labour, I'm afraid, has got much worse in our state schools. It's going to get accelerate under, you know, parent-led schools. I think uh, one of the main problems in this country is that we have a, 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 an educational apartheid with the middle class and above sending their children to private schools and those below uh, sending their children to state schools. And we need to try and dismantle the wall that separates the two. And one way to do that is to allow, yes, groups of middle class parents to set up schools that they'll feel comfortable sending their children to. And provided not just middle class children can get into those schools, but they'll be for everybody, that's a way of bringing more middle class children into the general state school population. Um, you yourself opted out in two of your children's cases, Polly, and I don't blame you for that. You were probably unhappy with the local state schools but had there been a free school in your neighborhood offering the kind of curriculum that our school is offering then you might have opted into the state system and as you say all the children at that school would have benefited if the local middle class population opted in most middle class I'm so people. sorry we're going to have to leave it there we're out of time but thank you very much indeed for joining us thank you news at skydocom 84501 what's happening on live at five here's jeremy